All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to this month's episode of TRC's Power Show Live, where we are going to share with you custom and off the shelf modular power solutions. All right. Let's get the show started. All right, Melissa, you ready to get this started? Yeah, let's go. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We're really excited about having you all here today. AC is going through this side right here and completely around to the DC. We're gonna go through our five top recommendations. When they actually have the power supply up there, and it could be several years, it could also be a few months. And TRC, we are, we're a specialty partner, right? We hey, hey, Melissa, before you go, we're claiming to be experts. We don't just make this claim. How do we train and bring people up to that level of expertise? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, when they incorporated the liquid cooled power supplies into their system, they didn't need to buy a new trailer. They didn't need to uh, do any uh, innovative design on their end. So they were able yeah. to they were able to take um, the existing cooling uh, mechanism they had. All right, excellent guys. So we have a really exciting topic here for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about custom off the shelf modular power supplies, and we're bringing you a couple of power supply experts here that are going to really give you a lot of great information and increase your awareness of not only these types of solutions but some specific products that clients are having a tremendous amount of success in the market. And also during this show, we are also gonna have a, an amazing uh, modular power supply offer that is sponsored by MeanWell. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Stephen Lagrimer, seen on the president here at TRC Electronics. I have almost 30 years of distribution experience specializing in power supply solutions. And I'm gonna introduce and hand it off to our two guests uh, that we have here speaking today on this uh, very awesome, uh, this incredible topic. Let's start off with Mike Battaglia from TRC Electronics. You, how you doing, Mike? Hey, thank you, Steve. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Power, uh, Power Show Live. I'm Mike Battaglia. I'm the Vice President here at TRC Electronics. I've had over 30 years of experience in power supply applications and design, and I lead an amazing team of applications engineers here at, at TRC. And along with myself, is Brian Liu. Brian, introduce yourself. Brian is from Meanwell. Okay, um, thank you, Mike. So um, I'm Brian Liu. I'm, I'm, I'm the application engineer at uh, Meanwell, and I have been, you know, building, working with application on power supply for over 15 years, solving problems, helping customers out with the um, safety, electrical, or all kinds of testing required. Okay. okay. That's that's awesome. So we're um, we're really excited today to present to you some of these custom and off the shelf power solutions that we can uh, get, that we can uh, do with, um, with modular supplies. So the intention of today's uh, show is, first we're going to learn about the most successful modular power supply products in the market. We're gonna feature some meanwhile products and also about uh, off the shelf products and, and how we can actually make them into customized solutions. And that's um, and we're going to actually demonstrate that to you with a live demonstration of how the assembly goes together. We're talk we're going to talk about time to market. This is a critical time in our in our industry with supply chain. And when you're trying to get a new design and you're trying to work out the power requirements and the power budget, how we're going to be able to get that time to market down uh, to to and shrink that down so that you can actually get your projects out to the market. We're also going to talk about some success stories uh, that we were able to help clients move forward and actually have them bring and deliver their amazing products uh, to the market. And then lastly, we'll talk about the, the investment that's required if you're doing a full out custom as, a, as a, compared to going with a, a modular customized power supply that we can actually deliver to you real fast. So let's, uh, let's get uh, started. And the first thing is, you know, what is a modular power supply? And the modular power supply really is a, um, is a product that is a front end. And the front end is where the AC uh, uh, comes into. And then there's different modules that we can provide in order to present the different voltages. So why do we use the modular supplies? 
Well, we use them when we're, we're not, it's not feasible where you have a cost or space uh, issue. So when you're uh, trying to design a system and you're trying to fit in a specific amount of power supplies, today's solutions are more compact and we can provide all these different customizable solutions without having to go to a custom. Or when the output voltages are not standard, or you know, sometimes you need 26 volts instead of 24 or 32 volts, which is not a very standard product. A modular power supply can offer you those uh, capabilities. And also when you cannot address the requirements with standard off the shelf, you, you may have um, a different voltage, a different power level. You may not be able to achieve exactly what you need. And then lastly, when time to market is critical and you need a fast solution, even when you're at a prototype stage and you're trying to get your design out to uh, or proven out and you don't have any power, modular power supplies can offer you uh, that, that amazing solution for you. So, uh, hey, Mike, um, Mike and Brian, I have a question for you guys. Uh, maybe you can uh, share this with our audience, but I think one of the, um, there's an important point here is that the level of awareness of the modular power supplies that are custom configurable as a possible solution is often overlooked or not even there for design engineers. Can you guys speak a little bit about this and how there's this opportunity to solve complex power uh, conversion solution uh, applications where the a design engineer might not even be thinking or, or, of that as a solution and where we've been able to use that as a solution that's really provide a lot of value for our manufacturer sure. clients? Sure, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to answer that. And also I'd like Brian to, uh to also uh, add to it. So the, the first thing is when you're in a, in a design stage, especially in an des in initial design, the, you may not know exactly what the power budget is for these different various outputs you need, whether it's for a mechanized motor type of a, of a, uh, a mechanism or if it's a CPU or communication boards. So when we're uh, discussing this with clients, we're trying to get from them what are their actual voltages that they need and at least get an approximation of power. So once we have that, the modular solution actually can offer a real benefit because of all these different variations that we can produce and be able to give the client, especially at the prototype level, be able to give them something that they can actually use. But since it's a standard product and it's already safety agency approved, they can actually carry that beyond just the prototype into pre-production and finally into production once they get all of their power budget solved. Brian, if you'd like to add to that. Yeah, so <clears throat> the um, modular advantage of the using modular power supply is it's, it's configurable and um, it can be also in parallel or in series uh, configuration. So let's say, you know, you're, when you're doing a prototype and you find out, oh, my motor now need more power. Okay, so you can, you connect two in parallel um, while the other one is, um, so for example, you have two 12 volt, um, the 12 volt will initially we use for um, a motor and then the other 12 volt for um, some kind of uh, MCU or control board, but you find out, oh, my motor now need more power. So in fact, you can just, you know, parallel the two 12 volt and, and, and operate to turn on the motor because the, um, the control board does, doesn't take that much power. So that is one of the advantages of, now, it's, it, it make it easy for you um, to, to, to do the testing and then uh, while you are, you are doing design. Um, another example is um, series, okay? It can also do series configuration. Um, take the motor as an example. Um, if you say, for, let's say you have 224 volt and you find out, oh, I need a 48 volt, volt motor now. I was using 24 volt. So um, you can put 224 volt in series to operate the 40, 48 volt motor. So those are the events of using, you know, um, configurable or modular power supply. Um, Why are you doing prototype? It's gonna speed up your uh, um, your, your process uh, instead of um, waiting to get a new power supply, 48 volt or higher power rating. And usually higher power rating, you know, the form factor is larger, so you may have to change your mechanical design as well. Um, so with the with the configurable modular modular power supply, you don't have to do those things at all. Yeah, Brian, that's a good point that you bring up. So there's scalability in these modular power supplies. So if you approach the design knowing that you may be off on your power requirements and you leave uh, empty slots in these configurable power supplies to be able to scale the power, and during testing, you learn that you need more power, you need to make some changes, 
you can avoid any mechanical changes uh, to your design. We've already, you're fixed in and set in with your mechanical uh, size of the power supply, still adjust the power supply, but not affect the, me the mechanical aspects of your design, which really can, you know, once you start changing the mechanical requirements and you need more space, well, now you're not just changing the power supply in your design, you might be changing other aspects of your design or other aspects of the circuit there, which really can set back a design a lot. Yeah, correct. I mean, mechanical design, um, you know, molding, tooling, laser cutting, those take time to, to get this new symbol. So it's, it's, it helps a lot with the uh, configurable power supply. Great, appreciate that, Brian. That's great, that's great. And uh, before we, uh, I'd like to actually uh, demonstrate some of these products uh, that we have and show you right now. One of them is the UP, UMP. So we'll, we have a slide for this, but the UMP solution is a fanless power supply. And uh, this, this solution right here is completely fanless. It's a 400 watt. And I believe we have a slide for that. That's great. So the, um, so the UMP is a 400 watt fanless one U high solution. It's a modular design with a bunch of DC to DC module cards. You can actually mix and match these cards. These cards come in either 35, 65 or 100 uh, watt series models. They do have wide range input from th minus 30 to 70 degrees C. And then they also meet the OVC uh, three requirements. And what this means is you can actually put these products into equipment that's much closer to the, uh, to the home run of the building. So you're actually uh, able to get this into a, a piece of equipment that's actually hardwired and not necessarily plugged in. And it meets the, uh, the new UL62368-1 uh, and also the EN62368-1. Brian, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, about the uh, UMP series? Um. <clears throat> The UMP series, the, one of the unique feature is fanless. Okay, the unit is fanless and um, conduction cool. Um, and also it can operate up to 85, 80 degrees C. Okay, so it's well regulated and fanless and the, the form factor is look very good as compared to um, all the, all the uh, available power, power in the market. So <clears throat> some application customer um, I can share is a uh, kiosk. So popular is a kiosk. Um, you know, you can have 24 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt. And your know, customer use 24 volt for motor and 12 volt for um, the displays and 5 volt for uh, controller. So it's it's a compact 400 watt fanless solution that are uh, popular in terms of kiosk application. How many outputs uh, on this one, guys? How, what's the number of uh, slots that we have on this one? It this can one be has four slots. And uh, what's what's nice about these products is that they're also completely isolated from each other. So that gives you the capability of mix and matching voltages and being able to uh, use them with separate returns. So that's important when you're uh, in a design of a system and you need separate returns of uh, specific circuit loops. This is a, a great option. And the fanless, not having that noise. So a noise, audible noise sensitive uh, solutions, this is a, a, a great solution for those types of applications. All right, the next one that we wanna bring is the NMP. So if I could quickly switch my camera here to show the product live, and then we can also show it on, uh, on there. The NMP solution comes in both uh, 650 watts and also 1.2 uh, kilowatts. So the 650 watt has uh, four slots and the 1.2 kilowatt has uh, six slots. This product uh, is one of the newer products that Meanwell has to offer. The, the first thing is that the NMP is actually medically rated. It has two times MOPP ratings when, when, uh, and also it's ITE AV safety approved. So with one model, you can actually uh, go into both of those applications. What that helps is that we don't have to stock two models and it gives us more availability for uh, no, without having to worry about that mix between medical and uh, uh, the ITE standard. It's also suitable for the uh, BF applications and with the appropriate system settings. And you can get a touch currents down to 100 microamps and that's at the high voltage. It's also low profile, which 
makes it really uh, great for those types of applications where you really don't have a lot of uh, space. And then all the features that are built in, we have the ability to parallel modules. We have the ability to do output programming. It has a global enable, so you can actually shut the whole system, uh, all power supply down with a global signal, just one signal. Or if you wanted to just remote control in the individual modules, it has that capability. Also, each module has an auxiliary DC output and over temperature alarm. So with, with the auxiliaries, you're able to actually power additional circuitry, housekeeping circuitry that you need. You have a DC OK and also a uh, cooling by a thermostatically controlled fan so that if the unit isn't fully loaded, that fan speed does reduce. And we also have a fan alarm function so that if the fan isn't working, it alert the system so that if uh, you have a fault condition before the actual system goes down, you can actually uh, perform maintenance. And in addition to that, it's backed by a Meanwell five-year warranty. Brian, would you like to add anything about this? Uh, th I know that this has been one of the most amazing products that have been launched. It's a newer product line. We've had a ton of success. Tell yeah, us this, a little bit guys, more about the, it. The, I just think the audience should know that this is the hottest selling modular power supply in the power supply industry for the past like 12 or 18 months. Uh, you know, this has been a really successful power supply. Not only is it a great product, but it's also available. And with all the supply chain disruptions, this model uh, was a, a game changer for a lot of manufacturers out there you know, throughout the globe because they were in modular power supplies that maybe they couldn't get delivery on and delivery was maybe up to two years. And meanwhile, really came to the rescue and especially here at TRC Electronics, we uh, we have a lot of success stories with this NMP series. And Brian, maybe you could share a little bit from uh, Meanwhile's end on the NMP series. Yeah, so um, this series is our second generation um, of the uh, modular configurable power supply. It's, it is very, like Stephen said, it's very popular now as compared, our, compared to our um, first generation because the form factor is smaller and, um, is widely available because um, you know TRC uh, can configure them and deliver within 24 hours. Okay, that is the, the what we take now um, as you know solidest um, uh, heating us. Um, you know, beside beside those, and then might mention other feature. It's good. It can be used in both uh, medical field or um, ITE field um, because it's certified to both uh, safety standard. Yeah, and I think that's a point we're gonna, we're gonna we're we're maybe missing so far, but we are going to uh, highlight this: is that these configurable power supplies we can configure them in 24 hours and ship the same day. So typically, in a design engineer will we'll work with and will will properly identify their specifications, mechanical, electrical, uh, safety and compliance, any features and functions they require for the power supply. And when we identify a modular custom configurable power supply within 24 business hours, one business day, we're shipping that prototype to that uh, engineer. So that engineer is getting a custom off the shelf power supply in one business day. And that power supply also has all safety certifications, no upfront NRE costs. And if they were incorrect with their specifications and made some miscalculations or they need to pivot their design, we can make a, an adjustment to that. The engineer can do that in a field with some of these configurables, or we can just conf reconfigure a new model for them. And 24 hours later, we are shipping that out the door for them. I, my, I have a question uh, here. It's coming in, uh, received a question on the NMP series. Uh, this question's for either Mike or Brian. You had mentioned that there is a fan, fan alarm control. So in the event that the fan fails, what happens to the power supply? Okay, um, I, I would take that um, question. So the uh, NMP is smart power. So when the fan is fail or when like, for example, a fortune, um, a, a debris like <clears throat> stocking the fan and not to, not to spin anymore, the power supply would shut down with output power. Okay, it's not output power anymore where the fan is not operating.
And the second part of that question uh, coming in here was you mentioned there's a fan control uh, speed. Can you just explain how that operates on that particular model? The, the, sure. the speed of the fan, yes. Sure. So um, the NMP design is um, the fan speed is controlled by a uh, internal thermistor. So when that thermistor ambient temperature is higher, it's going to go a little bit higher. The fan speed will go a little bit higher. So um, when, so let's say if you put it at ambient temperature, it's going to be at minimum speed. Okay. So um, when the ambient temperature will go up, like for example, from 25 to 35 degrees C, the fan would um, uh, spin faster and, and increase its duty cycle. So it basically uh, proportional to the ambient temperature. That's great, thank you, Brian. And then with the, uh, the next product that uh, Meanwell has from, for a modular offering is the MP series. Now the MP series is a uh, modular product that has, I call this field proven because it has been in the market for quite some time. It has addressed uh, hundreds if not thousands of, uh, of applications. And the great thing about this product is that it has a, a bit more flexibility on the module side. So the MP is also configurable and very customizable. It has built-in power factor correction. And it comes in three different power levels. It comes in a 450 watt, a 650 watt, and also a 1000 watt. And it's seven slots for the 1000 watts. So when we're uh, configuring solutions for clients here, we have a various number of options of 75 watt modules, 100, 150 watt, 210, and then even at the high power 300 and 360 watt modules, including many dual outputs. So we can pack a lot of different outputs for, uh, for many functionalities uh, for clients. And this makes it a, a really great product when uh, we have a client that has a lot of output requirements because they have a lot of functions in their system. Brian, any, anything you want to touch on this one? Um, this one is our legacy, um, but the advantage of this is it offers seven slots as compared to the, the NMP with six slots. So it's seven slots, so it offers even more output voltage option um, uh, than the NMP. But um, other than that, it's, it's, it's a legacy proven um, high quality um, part of series that have been on the market for, I think for 20 years. That's great. And um, one of the things we're going to actually do now is I'm going to invite one of our assemblers. We're going to actually demonstrate to you how these modular products are uh, brought in. So we're going to bring in uh, Caesar. Caesar's actually our technician uh, in the value added team, and uh, he's been with uh, TRC for over 11 years, and he's uh, been uh, very. Uh, he's been one of the first ones to actually. Um, uh, perform these configurations. So what we're going to do, uh, Caesar is going to now take an NMP1K2, which is a 1200 watt solution right here. And he's going to start to assemble it. So he's going to remove the cover. And as he removes the cover, he's going to start to configure the actual module. So he already has, he'll be working from a configuration sheet. So this will be like a build sheet that's already defined by the engineering team. And this build sheet is, uh, is, is approved. It, it basically has a bill of material in, in, in front of him. And he's able to now go ahead and configure the different module offerings that he needs. Now, in this specific uh, modular solution, we're also adding a blank plate so that it has some room for scalability. So he's going to add that blank plate, and he's going to actually do an assembly of that. And this is, uh, this is what makes this product so flexible and so uh, easy to get out to a client because once we've identified what the specifications are and we've actually now in engineering proven out a, uh, uh, a valid specification and had documentation, we're able to now give it to, uh, to the assembly team here and they're able to uh, fully assemble the product. So as you can see right here with just a few extra screws, and we'll let him uh, go through that process. Can you explain for the audience uh, how we're using a blank plate and what uh, when a blank plate is used in a modular power supply such as this? 
Sure, sure. So uh, if we could just pan back over here, we can actually see that this unit now has five outputs in a blank plate. The blank plate is there. Uh, for one, it's a safety issue because the blank plate is not being uh, used. So we're going to keep that blank plate unoccupied. And uh, I know your question also has to do with the scalability. So in case the customer wants to uh, now add another module later on, we're able to take that blank plate off and able to add that additional module. So the blank plate is used for the empty slots that are not being occupied by an output module, correct? That's right. And, it, and really it performs the function of making sure that uh, nothing can get into that empty slot. Uh, and it's also there uh, as, a, uh, as a way to, in case you needed an extra output, be able to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna ask Caesar now, let's say we have a client that has a configured unit and all of a sudden something changes and they need to uh, add, um, they need to change, for example, change the setting or location of a module. With just taking the cover off, we're able to now move any one of these modules to any one of those other slots. So if you have a system and you're now trying to wire a, a specific harness, you can actually move the modules accordingly by using uh, this uh, this uh, th this configuration and having that extra slot to move around. The other thing we can do is we can add parallel bars. So I'm going to ask Caesar now to actually add two parallel bars. And what the parallel bars are going to do is we're going to be able to increase the current on two like voltages. So for example, if a customer needs 24 volts and uh, right now it's 24 volts at 20 amps and they need to go to 40 amps, we're able to actually do that by adding an additional module and then putting them in parallel. So right now we're gonna show you this as he gets the other one installed. And we could pan to the camera, that's great. You can actually see it. All right, and then he's gonna add the parallel cable and what that parallel cable is going to do, it's going to allow the signals of one module to talk to the other module so that there's current sharing. And now we have a paralleled uh, configuration. And right when you there, say current, the, Mike, and when you say current sharing, what they're doing, it's, and Brian, maybe you could explain that a little bit. We've got a balanced load between the two modules, correct? Where, so that one isn't overworked compared to the other. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, so current sharing, meaning um, let's say we have a uh, application or a load that need uh, 360 watt power, and um, the and um, the single module power rating is only 240 watt. So um, we can put two in parallel, so that total available power is 480 watt. So when you load it with 360 watt, the current sharing mean individual model will output about 180 watt each to share the power. Okay, so both of them will share the current to the low of 360 watt with 480 watt available power. Okay, very good, right. So we, we're basically balancing the load between the two, between the two output modules evenly. Mm -hmm. Right. Now there are other times where uh, we have clients that they, they need a plus voltage, but they also need a negative voltage. And what's so great about this type of product is since all the voltages, all the outputs are isolated from each other, we can actually cr create negative outputs for those clients by using a common reference point. So what we're going to ask Caesar to do now is add what we call a series module. And the series module can be used for two things. One is that the series module can be used to make a series connection and increase the voltage uh, between two modules, giving us more power with increased voltage with the same current. But the other uh, uh, thing we use the series module for is when a client wants to do a plus and minus configuration. And we can show now by referencing the plus of side of one output to the minus side of the other output, we've now created uh, a plus or minus uh, configuration where in this case, we can show that this is the common point going from these terminals to this terminal, and then the minus would be taken off of the, the top here uh, of this specific uh, output. 
So there, this is a, a very popular request many times about how do we get uh, a negative voltage using the same exact system. Brian, do you want to add to that? I'm sure you've had a lot of different versions where you've had to do this. Yeah, um, negative voltage like application is amplifier, you know, where they need, for example, plus minus 15 volt. And, um, and um, for, I mean, it can also do series. I mean, the, the, um, the, the bus bar can also do series for customer who, like I mentioned earlier, um, application where they change the uh, voltage requirement. Um, I mean, I just went to a project where customer saying, oh, I need 96 volt. So we are, we were suggesting customer to use 248 volt in series. And uh, later on, they come back and say, oh, and now I need 130 volt. So we can make it with the modular, we can make it with three in series, adjust individual, individual output voltage down to like 43 volt to get you to 130. So because they were changing the LD array voltage, so they need higher voltage. So those are like Steve, Steven mentioned earlier, the empty slot also be useful. So if they need another power uh, for series or parallel power, then the empty slot can be taken out and then put another module in. So I think what we're demonstrating here is to show, give you guys a kind of a behind the curtain look of like how the modular power supplies are actually configured. And that you also have, if you can expand your mind a little bit, you, you have the ability during your prototype stage when you're designing your system for you, to, an engineer to do some of this themselves if they needed to. But once you go to production, we're building these power supplies for you guys. We're doing the final assembly but this just gives you an idea of how that's uh, accomplished, but also the flexibility that's available for you during the design phase where you need to make some pivots in your designs and whether it's uh, you know, voltage changes in your system because you have multiple different DC voltage requirements or your power requirement changed on one of those voltages. There's some real great flexibility in these configurable power supplies that is often overlooked. Yeah, that's, that's a, uh, and that's a, a good point is that when you're in a prototype stage, if you're trying to do this with a custom solution, you're going to be, and you have to change a voltage, it's going to push out that design weeks and not months. And one of the, idea, one of the reasons why we demonstrated it here is that we can actually do this or the, uh, or the client in the engineering lab can do this by changing a voltage simply with a potentiometer or just mixing and matching the right modules. And actually, we have a, a, a video that we can show that shows our, our TRC capabilities in, in production. So thank you, Caesar. I just want to uh, thank you for helping us out here. And let's pan off to the value-added video real quick so we can show you what our, um, what our capabilities are on a factory level. So right here, we're, uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a value-added center where we have factory certified assemblers. We have the uh, capability of 60 units a day with the, uh, uh, just on the NMP alone. We have, an, uh, this is an ISO 9001 certified facility. We have the uh, UL and TUV certified at the lab. And as well as that every single product that we, uh, we ship out of TRC is qualified by an electrical engineer. So we go through the entire ISO 9001 process from tracking the configuration sheet down to an assembly record and then a stamp on every single product before it goes to our clients. All right, so uh, what I'd like to do is move on to, well, what about our clients? What about some of the uh, successes that our clients have had? And uh, I'd like to share with you some of those uh, successes being that we're in the applications engineering uh, uh, team here, the first thing is that we are seeing an opportunity to help somebody every week, if not every day, with a modular configuration. And they can come in all forms and, and sizes from whether it's a, a, a new design or an existing design. And Brian, I'd like you to, uh, to ask you about the UMP first, is that 400 watt fan list. What, are, what successes have you seen with that product? Um, <clears throat> for that particular product, um, for application like indoor use, um, because fanless and um, customer lower power rating, so success cases are 
kiosk is a one like I mentioned earlier. Kiosk is one of the success cases uh, with lower power rating. You know, five volt, twelve volt, low power, thirty five watt, sixty watt. I mean, in the past, designer usually use single power uh, output, and then they may have some DC to DC converter on the board to step it out. Um, but with the UMP, it's going to save space. Okay, it's small form factor, and um, it can be uh, have five volt, twelve volt for uh, MCU or LCD touchscreen or, or motor. So kiosks are, are one of uh, popular application for the UMP. That's great. And you know, one of the uh, one of the things that we found is uh, you know we mentioned this about scalability when we were showing the blanking plate. We had a, um, a kiosk design a couple of years ago where this customer had uh, was shipping a kiosk, and when they were shipping that kiosk, they were uh, they they didn't know exactly what all the functionalities were going to be. Because sometimes that kiosk may come with an audio uh, amplifier, and sometimes it doesn't need any audio. Uh, different types of cash uh, uh, cash uh, uh, you know cash receipts or whatever the functionalities are that requires all these different outputs. So when we uh, uh, when they came to us for solutions. We immediately thought about the the NMP solution as being an, an option, but not only that, uh, they had different. They did have a voltage change on one of their products. They had a printer, and that printer needed a l additional voltage. It couldn't just operate on 24 volts. And one of the problems that they had was that when they actually built out their cable, they uh, they had a cable that was longer than they wanted. And that printer voltage, uh, there was a, a little bit of a voltage drop in that uh, printer. So what they asked us to do, hey, can you can you give us 25.2 volts? And with a matter of uh, minutes, we were able to reconfigure the product to a 25.2 volt output and basically have no no change. So that was uh, that that introduces the scalability. Then we had another client, and this is this is and this is very common in today's uh, in today's. Uh, uh, atmosphere with the um, with the supply chain. We had a client that was trying to get a thousand watt product that he already was using, that was a forty eight out volt output, very low profile, and needed low leakage current. And uh, the product that he was trying to source, he had already designed in, had a forty three week lead time. And then the manufacturer went and told him that they couldn't give him a lead time beyond forty three weeks, and they couldn't guarantee it. So they came to us. And within a matter of a half an hour, after we went through the entire specs, we specified an NMP 1K2 with all the modules paralleled to give them exactly that, that current. It's already fully qualified. It has agency approval. Now he has to just go through that process of getting it into his BOM, and we solved that problem. So the, this is what I would say is where we found right now one of the biggest uh, strengths in uh, in in the modulars is being able to solve customer problems that come up with over, uh, designs that are already in place, and um, the other the other one and just briefly is in, as as Steve put up the applications semiconductor equipment. We had a client that also was in the midst of a redesign of a uh, piece of semiconductor equipment, and the power supply needed to change. And so what we did, again, was we looked at the entire specification, what were the currents that he needed, what were the voltages, what were the peak outputs, and we were able to configure an NMP solution for that client. But here was the, here was the challenge. They needed a small number of samples to prove out internally and as well as to get it through agency. We are able to deliver them the exact solution that that customer needed uh, so that they can move forward perform their agency and launch the product on time. And then uh, finally, uh, Stephen, if you wanna bring up the applications, just to get into some others, there are a numerous number of applications for these products um, that you could get into. We have laser equipment, uh, laser engraving equipment. We have uh, industrial equipment of all kinds, medical equipment. So anything that's, that's medical that has to do with either the functionality and some of it, even where we get into some uh, uh, some applications where we have uh, actually have to get um, a connection to the patient, the NMP has been able to solve many of those problems. So um, 
Brian, with, with that, you know, sometimes customers ask us, hey, can I solve all these problems with just using multiple power supplies? And so what have you seen with that when you get a client that actually comes to you and says, hey, you know what, I got a lot of space and I could just go with uh, just a, diff a different variation of, of multiple power supplies. What are some of the problems that you've seen? Um, the problem with using, let's say if your application needs four different voltage and you were trying to use four different power supply, 5 volt, 12 volt, 24 and 48, um, <clears throat> the problem is the liquid current because each individual power supply has its own liquid current and with four units in one system, the liquid current is going to be add up. It could be a total of the four. So let's say if one unit is one milliamp liquid current, you're going to have four milliamp liquid current for the entire system. Now that's going to play into safety requirement. Okay, so sa uh, safety usually uh, require 3.5 milliamp. Or, or, or depend on your application, some require only like 0 0.75 milliamp. So the liquid current gonna total gonna add up uh, up to four units, and you're not gonna pass safety. Okay. So with the NMP, it's offer four four output and one single liquid current. Okay, that is about 200 microamp and 400 microamp. So it's gonna give you a home free. Okay, home free. Um, solution and um, another advantage is uh, EMI. Okay, so you're dealing with four power supply with different switching frequency. Okay, so you're gonna deal with EMI and the NMP only one single switching frequency. The EMI is gonna be much better and easier to to resolve. Okay. That's so those are the, the two main advantages of uh, using the uh, multiple configurable power supply, multiple, multiple output. Yeah, and let's not and let's not also forget those manufacturing engineers and the, and the ones that have to actually do all this cabling. When you're uh, when you're designing this product and you've got one AC input, now you can actually bring one AC input either directly to the power supply to some supplementary filtering. You don't have all these other AC power uh, uh, power cords going throughout the system. So there there is an added benefit, and it, and what that does is it makes the assembly. Uh, more cost efficient, uh, efficient. And then there's also, uh, just to touch on before we move forward to, uh, touch on to some of the best practices when using uh, modular power supplies. And of course, one of the things that come up is cable dressing, which is, uh, which is critical. The, the product has, you know, uh, the product is very compact. To so just bring us to the uh, camera again, you could see that the product is uh, compact in terms of where the outputs are. So when we tell clients about cable dressing, we, we just let them know to make sure that they use the proper uh, cabling with a twisted pair along that and, and get all of those harnesses nice and, and neat so that they can get them away from the power supply. In addition to that is if you're sharing loads and you have multiple loads going to a high output uh, point, we also uh, advise them to make sure that they have the proper fusing if one of those loads may be subjected to a fault or a short circuit. But other than that, it's a really simple way to, to actually power your system. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, are asking, so these are all customized solutions. Why do we need to use this as opposed to a custom power supply? And I'd like to bring up a slide and this is something that, um, this is data that's been accumulated over the years. It hasn't changed much, but when you're developing a power supply, specifically a, a type of power supply that's like the 1K2 uh, multiple output NMP, and you're starting from scratch, the NRE alone, just the time, the design engineering cost is typically $125,000. That's just to get a circuit up and running that's debugged and tested. And then you have to build prototypes. And those prototypes are usually have to be built by engineers in very low quantity. And the unit price for those uh, can get pretty substantial if you put in all the engineering time and all the resources associated with the complexity of a four output thousand watt system. And then you have to go through safety. And all those safety agencies can be uh, four to 12 weeks, depending on who you're using. Uh, it, that can take even longer especially if there is a problem with the unit. If you have an isolation problem, it could end up costing you 
many, many more weeks of redesign. And then once you get all that proven out, you have to get tooling for the production facility. You have to get tooling for the ATE test equipment. And that can run uh, about $12,000, two to four weeks to develop that. And then finally, you have to get pre-production where you have to prove out the design and manufacturing, build a small number of around 25 units. And once you get that process done, that could be another 12 weeks and uh, 23,700. So when you're done with a complete uh, solution of a custom supply, you're looking at an investment of $200,000, which means that you have to have a significant amount of units to build in order to recover that, uh, that non-recurring engineering. And you have to make sure that when you're going through this process, you don't have any uh, major redesigns because any redesign may cost you the whole program or it may at least it may cost you significant amount of, of backlog where you can't get that product out to market and be competitive. So, I mean, if we have a, actually, we have a comparison of this. Um, and um, before I go into that, Brian, have you seen these are typical numbers for, uh, for the, um, that you've seen for customized solutions? Yeah, I mean, that is, I, that is a typical number. Safety nowadays costs a lot, UL, TUV, and then you have to spend <clears throat> costs on the, on the EMC lab as well. And um, also design timeline, right? Um, it's going to take you about a year, a year to um, a year and a half to get a customized unit that, um, that you want. Um, both. So with the NMP, it's, it's there for you. I mean, it's time to market is faster and uh, lower investment um, cost on the uh, for for the system or for the company. Yeah, and I'm sure that if uh, if we talk to a bunch of power supply, if we talk to power supply engineers, they would all agree that then is the EMI factor, getting into the lab, uh, into the T EMI facility, going through conducted and radiated EMI. It's not just the cost of the lab, it's the engineering time that's associated with that to debug and get that, that product into spec. So well, it's, uh, certainly a lot of investment. Stephen, if you could put up that slide, just to show a comparison of, of the two, um, of all the different factors that are involved between a custom and a modular configuration. Yeah, and I just like to, cost, I like, to, I'd like to add something to it, Mike. Yeah, so sure. The, also, you're increasing your risk in a project because once you go custom, you need to make that in initial investment. Now, not 100% of pro, uh, projects don't make it to market successfully. So you're making that investment during the design phase. And if your final end product doesn't succeed in the marketplace, that's a loss. So you're adding another big risk financially into your project where you can eliminate some of your financial liability, your financial risk. You, get, you, know, you can look at uh, the configurable power supplies versus custom also as in uh, as a way of uh, managing risk. It's risk management in your project. So you also want to look at it through that lens as well. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And yeah, when, and just to compare the two, uh, and this is, this is something that uh, I've personally experienced, by the way, between the two in my career, I've quoted custom solutions. And of course, I've, I've, uh, I've helped uh, many customers with the modular configuration. The cost comes into the factor first, which is, you know, the per unit cost of a custom may be more cost effective over time if you build enough volume in order to recover the, the initial investment, as opposed to moderate uh, cost for small volumes of a, of a modular solution. There's almost no comparison there. There's no, almost no upfront cost except the product itself. And then if there's the efficiency, many would claim, well, if I build a custom solution, I may be more efficient because I'm building it exactly for the system, but things come up, change, there are changes that are, are being made. The, the product life cycles are all different. So the efficiency uh, may be able to still reach high levels with the NMP. It's, it's, uh, it's sufficiently efficient, over 90% in some cases with some of the modules. So it, uh, it, it takes care of that, that factor. Lead time. The lead time of a custom modular, uh, a custom solution could be anywhere from 16 to 22 weeks. That's, that's when during good times. And that's not during the environment that we have today. And then you have to forecast, you have to build in advance, you have to have consignment agreements 
And if you're managing all those parts, uh, you're managing uh, easily 200 components, or you're having your, your contract manufacturer who has to manage 200 components. And if one component isn't, isn't there, you can't build a product. Where with a modular, we've typically seen uh, stock to eight weeks. We're stocking the products because there's so many different places we, uh, we can offer it that it is lower risk to have these products on hand. And of course, there's the agency approvals which are immediate for modulars because they've already been uh, tried and true. They've already gone through that uh, safety uh, testing. And then non-recurring engineering. And this is, the engineering investment is substantial. And let's talk about when you have a team of engineers and you have a limited number of engineers where someone now has to manage a power supply, uh, a, a, on your team has to manage a power supply development as opposed to being able to focus on, on something that's more related to their system. So you have that, uh, that engineering investment, not just from the development, but also you have to, someone has to manage that and make sure that it goes on time. There's almost no investment if you're using a modular, except for the cost of verifying the solution. Changes to the spec, this is, could be astronomical. And then the total cost. The only way that you're going to be able to get a cost advantage with a, a custom solution is if you have a significant amount of volume with little to no changes over a long period of time. Otherwise, we've seen $5,000 of 5,000 pieces and under being very cost effective for a modular configurable. Yeah, and Mike, and I would just add to this in terms of lowering your cost and in, in your investment into a project that requires a power supply. Well, even during a selection process, you know, these power supplies can be a little bit complicated to, to select and actually configure their specific model for your application. So I would encourage the audience to contact our office. You can contact us through trcelectronics.com or you can give us a call at 888-612-9514 and just ask for expert uh, assistance with selecting a uh, configurable power supply. We'll run through the basic fact finding to find out all the specifications you require. That will typically be a five minute conversation tops if you have identified your specifications. And we'll be back to you shortly with a solution that will meet all your specifications and be able to build that sample for you and prototype within one business day and ship it out next day. So I want to emphasize if you, uh, if, you, if you have a requirement where you're considering custom or you determine you wanna use a modular power supply or any power supply for that matter, contact our office and we're going to eliminate all the complexities and simplify it for you and save you hours of time walking through data sheets and trying to figure out what the best model is for you, how to, conf how to uh, configure the actual model number. We can walk you guys through that. You know, and in this, at this time I'll also, want to provide this offer here that we promised today. So we're, uh, we have a Meanwell NMP modular power supply demo kit. This is exclusively offered at TRC Electronics. So we have the QR code here. If you scan that QR code uh, and you get to that page, you just submit your information and you'll be entered to win one of these uh, NMP 650 modular power supply kit. This, is, this uh, retails for normally over $500 in value, and we're going to be giving away two of these over, uh, during the month of December. So you get a head start here on uh, entering the contest. But the advantage of this, Mike, you can maybe talk a little bit about, um, I'll stop, we'll stop sharing that screen, and you could talk a little bit about um, you know, the advantage of an engineer having this kind of demo kit. Yeah, and actually uh, we have the demo kit right here to show that so ready to go. Uh, with the uh, NMP, uh, all the necessary screws and also the different module offerings. It comes with a line cord underneath here and an instruction manual, installation manual. So you can, uh, you can uh, play around with the different voltages that you need and, uh, and hopefully be able to integrate it in one of your systems. All right, very excited. So let's, uh, let's just wrap this up here and like talk about the takeaways here about uh, the information that we provided today. Yeah. All right. So um, key takeaways from uh, this PowerShow Live. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the speed to market. This is, this is critical in accelerating your system design. 
especially in a competitive market that we're in, where you're trying to get product out to the market quickly, a modular power supply is going to be able to give you that, er, that early prototype. But we found that even those that, take, that want a custom, actually, when they get to the modular, modular solution, they can actually carry through, through from prototype to production. The flexibility, we demonstrated to you the flexibility of being able to make changes on individual outputs. And also, then this is without adding significant cost, as opposed to if you're in a custom solution and you have a voltage change, it could lead to uh, a possibly even a, a project cancellation. So this is a, a, a great, uh, the, the flexibility is, is awesome. And of course, the supply chain, being able to uh, have lower lead times and financial liabilities, we've saved hundreds of clients with going with a modular power supply solution, even if they had one output, because we were able to provide that flexibility and that, and that solution in a quick time frame. Yeah, and I think that, you know, one of the intentions here today, we want to share what's working for clients in the marketplace. And we would hate for our clients not to learn about what their competitors are, made, uh, are benefiting from in terms of like components and power conversion. So there's, uh, this is really overlooked as an option. And there's a lot of value when you consider the modular configuration power supplies. And we're helping clients have a lot of success especially in the past 12 to 18 months with these solutions. Meanwhile, has been uh, really rescuing a lot of clients from uh, supply chain issues uh, and their products are really incredible and providing some incredible solutions for some incredible applications out there. So uh, if we do we have any questions before we wrap this up, Melissa, are we good? Uh, because before we wrap it up, we just wanna make sure that you didn't get any more questions that needed to be answered. Um, yeah, thanks for checking. No other questions, but I did have a comment from a client that another benefit of them using the modular power supply, specifically the NMP650, was they designed that uh, footprint into one application, and now it's designed into four or five different products, and they have that particular footprint designed in. They don't have to change their mechanical specifications. They're just changing the output voltages and uh, they've saved over $50,000 just on one application alone. Okay, that's awesome. We're happy to hear it. Yes. So Brian, we wanna thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you guys. Meanwhile has been an incredible power supply manufacturing partner for TRC Electronics and all the US manufacturers here in the US. So we're so grateful for you joining us today. Um, thank you. Um, thank you. It's, uh, it's, a, it's gonna be a good show, good show. All right. We appreciate it, Brian. All right. Thanks for everybody for joining. We'll see you next time on the next edition of the TRC Power Show Live.